You like that one, huh? I enjoyed that, yes. Yeah, okay. I might get that crochet into a pillow. Della Vadova on the drive. The jumper from the wing, knocked down by another freshman. Freshman to freshman there, as Della Vadova found Jordan Page. Well, that's an example of why St. Mary's has been able to find some consistency. Their younger players are very skilled, very confident. Randy Bennett gives them enough time to come in, find their confidence, and pull it right in. Lovadova on the drive, draws another foul. It'll be a reach-in foul called on Bolkong. You mentioned how Gonzaga, down the stretch in games, could eventually be burned by this statistic. It's not Bolden or Gray at the free throw line. They struggle. Yeah, it's it's going to be a problem if they can't write that. And Bob, that's a that's a, a a thing where you look at concentration for the Gonzaga team. When you struggle from the line, it's usually a lack of concentration, and they've really got to write that because they've had a tremendous not conference schedule. They've had tremendous run in the West Coast Conference. You don't want to go down because of lack of free throw shooting. And Gonzaga plays everybody. They went to Maui and played Colorado, Wisconsin, and Cincinnati, beat them all. They've also beaten Washington State, Davidson, Oklahoma, Illinois. They lost to Michigan State, Wake Forest, and Duke. And that is some kind of out-of-conference schedule. Oh, man, I mean, it's as tough as any team in the nation. And you know, a lot of people now find it very advantageous to play Gonzaga. That was a terrible call. Harris lost his balance, and Ben Allen is called for the foul, so he is bailed out. But these are quality opponents, to say the least. And really, the only clunker in there was the loss to Duke. And you have two or three games, as every team in the nation does, where you're flat, things aren't working out. That's what happened in the Duke game. But that loss to Michigan State, they played Michigan State in East Lansing as physical as any team this year has played Michigan State. And they sent a warning out to the rest of the country that they were going to have to be uh, you know a, a factor coming down the stretch It's a very talented team and it's a, a, a Gonzaga team Bob that I haven't seen in a few years got a little nastiness about it Mark you mentioned to us that the win they just had in their last game over Memphis was as impressive as he thinks any win they've had this season is yeah, Memphis is underrated especially at home tough team to go against foul called on Foster Uh, it may have been a reach in on Grant Gibbs. That'll put Samhan at the line. Gonzaga, are, they're waiting for Omar Samhan to make the bounce, and they're coming on the double team hard. And Omar looked like he got the benefit of the doubt that time. I thought Grant Gibbs, when he reached in, got a piece of the wrist. Should the superstars get the benefit of the doubt once in a while? I think so. He's put in mad work. He's put in Yeoman's work. Talk about a guy that's transformed his body. Came in around 300 pounds as a freshman. Would get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and run sprints. Worked on his game. He really took uh, a liking to Diamond Simpson, one of the best players to ever play at St. Mary's. Picked up on his work ethic, and you see the results. Well, Mitchell Young doing a fantastic job in this possession. The nine Elias Harris the basketball. Gray lost it out of bounds. Well, St. Mary's doing a really good job of using their bench, subbing guys in, keeping players fresh. Nicky McConnell was able to get his breath there. Now he comes back in for the final push here in the first half. Samhan steps into a jumper, rattles it home, and he already is in double figures here in the first half. Bob, I can't tell you what kind of start this is on the road by St. Mary. Showing you why they're undefeated, along with Syracuse, only two teams undefeated on the road in the nation. And besides a few errant passes by that man, Della Vadova, they've been very solid here in the first half. Sanhan looking for cutters, picks up his dribble. So he has to clear it back out near midcourt to McConnell. McConnell around the screen, drives it, rejected by Foster. Numbers now for the Zags. Bolden finds a cutting Harris. Hard foul, score the basket, and on his way to the free throw line is Elias Harris with a chance for a three-point play. 
Watch the hesitation by Matt Bolden. Nice block. You can't lay it up on 7-5. Big fella got it out. Watch the hesitation right here. He head faked to draw the defense, gave Elias Harris time to come into the picture. Beautiful setup by Matt Bolden and Elias Harris showing you some grown man strength besides his freshman classification. And talking to Mark Few earlier today, he said that he didn't even think it was realistic to expect Elias Harris to be this good this quickly. But that he's a young man that's very mature in all of his responsibilities. In class, off the court, Villavadova for three. Too strong. And now a cheap foul and a reach in by Elias Harris. And once again, that'll put St. Mary's at the free throw line. It's almost like the, the hot cookies on the plate. When a guy swings the ball in your vicinity, it's just hard not to swipe down on like that. See, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> What's your favorite? What kind? <laughs> the, the round kind. The, round, the, sugar in the, <laughs> the ones that come out the oven. 62% free throw shooter, no good. On the first, ESPN, your one-stop destination for celebrities, basketball stars of the past and the future on Friday night. First at 7 Eastern, Terrell Owens returns to Dallas for the 2010 NBA Celebrity Game presented by Final Fantasy 13. Then at 9 Eastern, rivalry week continues with a backyard brawl, West Virginia and Pittsburgh, a doubleheader on Friday night. Well, St. Mary's trying to keep ball out of the paint area. Gets it to go, plus the foul again. And again, it's Clint Steindl who couldn't prevent the layup and a chance for a three-point play. Bob, this is what makes Gonzaga so difficult to defend. Their ability to space the floor, cut, and pass. Look at the pass by Robert Sacre. Understands that he's got his teammate struggling a little bit, and Stephen Gray makes a hard cut, rewards his guard going to the hole that time. Nice job by Robert Sacre. How many times do you see big men have the ability to make passes out of the post like that? First field goal for Gray. He's been in double figures 18 times this season, although he struggled lately. Only 26% from the field over the last three games for Gonzaga. A little full court pressure by Gonzaga. Trying to get St. Mary's out of the rhythm in the half court. McConnell. Nice ball movement. And the reverse goes inside by Mitchell Young. St. Mary's right now has three point guards on the floor. So it's very difficult to press them. You've got three guys to handle the ball and make decisions. Pretty shot by Sacre in rhythm. I don't know this for a fact, Bob, but I'm willing to guess that the coaching staff at Gonzaga challenged Robert Sacre because that man ate.